we hear weight transfer, and 99 times out of 100, somebody shows up on the driving range with me, creating that with lower body movement, swaying into the right side, just trying to shift back into the left side. And I always tell people, I learned from Todd, listen, if I'm spending time swaying and not turning, my, my arms are gonna be lifting to the top without my body's turn. If I spend time sliding excessively, well, what's getting the club from back here down the line of the target? My hands. So when we swing 100 and something miles per hour, whatever speed we're swinging in this direction, there's gonna be a little bit of movement towards Absolutely. the target. But with the right setup and the right backswing, none that you actively have to be working hard to try to create. It's more of a result than an Exa action. Exactly right. right. So I'll let so, Todd run through that. Yeah, so, so ultimately, I mean, like, you, like we said, where does your weight belong? It better be on the balls of your feet. So like if you're looking at me right here, I see so many people that, one, they walk into it first. I think this is a common amateur mistake. They walk into it, they step in too close, they take their stance, they're like this, and then they set the club down and they're back on their heels. And I always ask people, can you lift your toes? If you can, that's a problem. Right, so Huge. if I walk into it and I get my upper body set, my arms underneath my shoulders, I mean, there's a little bit out there, but basically I adjust my left, adjust my right, you should be able to, and not a lot, but you should be able to just gently lift up your heels, meaning that there's more weight position proportion toward the balls of your feet. I have this broken down to four points of the swing. Now, I always say there's three components of connection. Club in front of hands hands in front of center of body, and the X factor, where the pressure is at the given time the hands and club are in those spots. As we talked about, ideally it's arriving at the top with my turn finishing, right? So here's the big thing. I showed Todd this today. I broke it down into four quadrants, ready? And what's cool is you can actually illustrate that like this. You can actually create the four quadrants like this right here, okay? Quadrant one, two, three, and four. Number one, there's the pressure. Number two, there's the pressure. In transition, number three, there's the pressure. And through impact, there's the pressure. I think that's really brilliant. Isn't that a cool, isn't that a cool way that. to explain yep. that? Yep. So, Perfect. you know, you're one, two, and guys, here's the thing. I feel like I'm in a position of strength right here as a result of that. I, I think the Hideki drill is just a great drill, stopping at the top. Why? Well, because guess what? Where you're at. If you're disconnected from the ground up or one thing gets there without the other, you're standing there at the top going, I can't hit this. Yeah. But in my position right there, like a bow and arrow being pulled back to maximum tension, I could hold that thing for five minutes, one hour, no relevance to how far that golf ball goes or the arrow goes. So once again, you know, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know, I would take something like this and I go, well, how do you work on that in a drill form, okay? Well, here's the way. Well, I would break that down real slow. I'd go, well, hold on. Right, so that for me was able to- brain a, ch a chance to I was, feel the I position, was feeling it, right, you know? Right, I was right. feeling that, that, that movement throughout the swing. Now, you know, the more aggressive version of that, that my players do a lot, is the set go. But a huge component of the set go is having that weight in the correct spot so that I can turn to the top and then unwind. Okay. I go into my golf swing and I've got a lot of data force platforms, you know, pressure mats and such. You see great players, they're standing on the balls of the feet till really the arms are about rib cage high. This is such a huge point for our players. Then, you know, they're getting everything in front of them and then they have room to make their big turn, let's say their big turn to complete their swing. So really, where are they hitting their heel? They're hitting the heel as their arms are completing their swing. Now I'm on the heel, now I can go this way. Your brain's really smart about balance, right? And so if I'm about to fall off a cliff, what am I gonna do, right? Exactly. So a lot of times when people get into their heels early, right, then they recover by going to their toes late. Absolutely. Right? So we wanna start on the balls of the feet with some knee flex, I want to stand the balls of the feet so I can get into the heels late. Do you know like, how many times I see this on the range? The straightening of the right knee and the dropping of the left yeah, shoulder. Yeah, oh, 100%. I hate that move right there. 100%. Drives yep. me crazy. But here's the thing. What's important to understand is the weight is moving down the inside of my trail foot as a result of my turn. I'm turning that pocket back and that's what's moving that weight back there. Now, what I always tell my players is, 
you're not restricting your lower body and then turning. I don't like to break up the swing like that. That's very PC. He always told me it's just a one, two motion. But what I learned was I'm keeping my trail knee flexed. We always talk about this. Never is there anything athletic done when that thing's straightened out. You alleviate that ground pressure, right? right? So here's the big thing. If my knee stays flexed, I can now feel like I can make a big turn, but that weight crawls back into my heel. It will go from here to here. Yeah, and you can see your knee is changing positions. It's not that we're saying don't it keep just it still. Doesn't stay no, there. Not at all. It, we're just saying we don't want to lock it out. Absolutely. You know, and I always talk about loading. We talk about loading. We're talking about loading the quad and the glute. Well, if I lock the leg, I can't use those muscles. Absolutely. And I got to use them in downswing. It's possible, but it's hard. Hard. So I'd much rather be kind of here. Then as I coil, the hip goes back. Well, then I'm getting good load in the quad and the glute. You can see that's power right and there. And, that, can, and that's can use that, right? so important to understand that. This stays flexed. Of course, it's going to move back a little bit with the pocket moving back. But I'm turning, as, I'm turning a lot from here. It's funny. When you watch me at the top of my swing, you'll never see daylight between my legs. But the reality is I feel like I made the biggest turn I possibly can. Yeah. It's just I do a nice job, because you've taught me to do this, of keeping that knee flexed. And my turn is happening from here. I'm turning from here while keeping that maintained. And that allowed the pressure to work back into that heel as a result of my turn and not simply starting back there, which once again causes that disconnection from the ground up. Now, I split up my feet 50-50. If I'm standing straight up and down, 50-50. I tilt forward with no knee flex. I'm like about 100% on this side. I flex appropriately. I'm feeling more 70-30 personally. Now, Nick Faldo used to always practice his set position with the balls of his feet being up in the air like this to help him feel the takeaway, not be back here too soon. Now, most golfers who set up with the hip behind the ankle rather than the hip joint being over the ankle, set up with the majority of their weight back. And as Todd would say, you can lift your toes as opposed to only being able to lift your heels Heel and just wiggle your toes. Yeah. Okay, huge in the short game as well. So when you're sitting back, now the majority of the weight is back here. Well, think about this. Not only does it get the takeaway inside and decrease the leverage here so you don't hinge the club properly, but connection from the ground up is not achieved. Okay, ideally what we want, you guys, is we want the pressure to be here. This is what he saw with Patrick Cantlay. And then it works back into that heel. So the same time my hands and golf club arrive at the top, the pressure's loading into that heel. If the weight's already back here, I'm halfway back and the pressure's already there. We start back here, guess what? None of that's possible. I'm it. already starting in quadrant two before I've even taken it back to the first position. So having that 70, 30, 60, 40, having that hip over the ankle, having those shoulders tilted past the toes like Todd always taught me, that really helps me. Now, if I feel this knee stay flexed and I feel the pocket and the shoulder turn together, I can feel everything sequentially go back in that heel as everything arrives at the top. At Porzak Golf, we take a lot of pride in having developed some of the best and most consistent golf swings on the planet. We do this through simplicity. Our Full Swing Masterclass will take you on a step-by-step, easy-to-understand process on how to get your golf swing better than ever. Join the many before you who've utilized our Full Swing Masterclass to take their games to the next level and beyond.